the Packers will have a first and goal. Receiver to the right, Jimmy Graham. Rodgers, quick toss in the flat. Left side, got his man for the end zone. And a touchdown. First and goal podcast on Spreaker.com. And we're now on all your favorite platforms. iHeartRadio, Spotify, CastBox, Google Podcasts, Tumblr, YouTube, and SoundCloud. You can always follow us on Twitter at First and Goal Pod and our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash First and Goal Pod 33. Get money, yeah. Every day I'm hustling. Uh huh. Get money, yeah. Uh huh. Keep money here. Uh huh. Keep money here. Every day I'm. Every day I'm. And welcome everybody to another live edition of First and Goal with me, your founder and producer, Jay, in the UP. And not here today, but still your host with the most, who is on assignment covering the Redskins-Falcons game, Dave, who's not here. But, you know, he still gets his introduction because even though he's not here live with us on air, he is still part of the team on assignment down in Georgia. Um, Packers game tonight. Uh, some very good things going on on the game. But first of all, kind of disappointing because the Packers starters got pulled. Uh, field conditions. This is another one of those situations where I'm starting to feel like, is the NFL not doing its right due to uh, make sure that we're getting through to all these guys when, you know, we have professional athletes that have standards that protect their overall health and ability to play the game. And this isn't the first time this is something like this has happened with the NFL. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed because it's 2019. We, we should know that sod, if it doesn't look good on Wednesday or Monday, it ain't going to get much better, okay? If there's a giant, you know, void in the field from goalposts being moved, that's the thing that kills me in the first place is just the fact that all they're not – neither team is from Winnipeg, okay? I understand we're trying to get in inter- international games here, but neither team is from Winnipeg, and therefore, what are we doing? Why are we playing a game where neither team is even from the area or even the country, for that matter – um, it baffles me a little bit. Uh, in other news, we have uh, Ezekiel Elliott getting uh, an offer from the Dallas Cowboys, supposedly, from what's being reported. They are offering to make him the second or one of the highest paid running backs. Therefore, he's presumably going to be somewhere in between Le'Veon Bell and and Todd Gurley. Uh, I can't say enough. I believe this is a mistake. I don't think that any of these teams that paid these running backs are going to get the juice out of the squeeze, so to speak. You know how I feel about it. I think it's been proven with the new CBA nowadays that you can find backs very cheap and you can replace them easily. Now, great backs, again, they're not easily found, but... I believe it was Russell Baxter that that went through this with us that I think only one time has a leading NFL rusher made it to the Super Bowl and I don't think they've won if I'm remembering correctly uh in the modern era of course is where this is speaking and uh you know there's a bunch of stats about the quarterback with the most touchdown passes and the most yards and all that stuff never winning a ring so I definitely believe it becomes a situation where you want to figure out 
who you're going to spend your money on and if they are a necessity to be able to win a championship. And I think paying a premium running back this day and age isn't a necessity to win a championship. And therefore, I believe it's a mistake to pay these guys the type of money that they're paying. I think it's a mistake to pay wide receivers over $18 million with the increase. Uh, I think when you start getting into the lower tier of quarterbacks nowadays and you're paying receivers that on their best day in their dreams would touch the ball 10 to 15 times in a game. Um, I believe Peter Schrager made this point today, and I've made it before. I agreed with him. I had made it earlier. The CBA is, is not friendly to one specific position, and that is running backs. Running backs have five solid years to make it, and, and with the way the CBA is, if you're a first-round running back, you never make it to your second big contract there, uh, so to speak. So, that being said, I believe you can find other places to make your money, or spend your money, I should say, and uh, make your team overall deeper, uh, prepared for injuries, and just the long haul of the NFL season. Moving on, a uh, few games that were on tonight. Uh, the Giants looked pretty good. Eli Manning had some time. That offensive line looked like it was much improved from a year ago. Uh, we have Dave out there. If you're following Dave and uh, our timeline, uh, it's at First and Goal Pod. It's at Steak and Cheese for Dave and at UPJ33 for me. Uh, if you're following Dave, he's been tweeting out updates on his uh, live coverage of the Redskins Falcons game. Darius Geis has had some good moments. Um, they've had the Redskins have had uh, a little bit of trouble. It sounds like with Case Keenum, and Atlanta looks like it's got a pretty deep running back core, from what I've been reading from Dave. So we do have a special guest coming on tonight. So, his name is Monty, and if you weren't following me a couple of weeks ago, I was on his show, and so that is the Full Monty Football Show on blogtalkradio.com with Nuts and Bolt Sports. He is going to be on in a few minutes. We're going to give him a call at about 9.45 or so, and he's going to break down. Uh, we're gonna, he, he, li he likes the Packers, the Titans, and the Jets, if you haven't followed him before. So that gives us a little bit of versatility when we're talking to Monty tonight. Um, in other Packer-related things, because the game is going on, Trevor Davis looks absolutely on fire tonight. I believe he is going to make this roster because um, – you saw what we had talked about with him before, just in the way they're playing him tonight. The little jet fake, reverse sweep, uh, the jet sweeps. He's explosive. He had some good catches tonight for a touchdown. Made plays as a receiver that we haven't seen before. And uh, so I think Davis has pretty much solidified his spot on the 53 now. It still doesn't mean that I have come off of my viewpoints now of wanting to only believe they're going to keep probably five wide receivers. And I think I'm, I'm still sticking with that. I still believe that truly. Uh, six wide receivers I don't believe is completely out of the question anymore. I just think it's unlikely still in my opinion. Um... I just think that they got they got enough talent there that it's going to be very hard for people to accept some of the talent not being on the roster, not being able to keep seven, eight wide receivers like we have in the past. Uh, 
so I believe that in that case, there is going to be a lot of people out there that are disappointed. Uh, you know, I mean, Lazard has flashed before, but tonight he didn't. He hasn't looked that great so far. I mean, um, Shepard, I believe, is a bubble guy, but again, I. It's just there's only so many spots, and the way they want to play, I truly believe that they are going to keep only five receivers, six at the very most. And I think maybe if they keep six, it might be a scenario where they're trying to keep a guy that they don't want to go to waivers but maybe be able to trade him or something like that. Who knows? I mean, there's a lot of stuff happens, especially if there's been, you know, injuries happen that changes the viewpoint because of who's available, who you got on your short list of guys to pick up. When somebody goes down, you shuffle your roster out around when that happens. So you never know exactly how this 53 is going to break down, but that, like I've said before, that's just how I see it. I think the running backs, tight ends are going to be more prominent, and I think this year for the first time, you're going to see several DBs kept that you didn't expect to be kept before. So the DB room right now, although young, is very deep, and uh, they like to play a lot of nickel, dime, and quarter, or uh, excuse me, nickel dime coverage with that uh, dollar coverage in there too so that requires a lot of DBs and you even have DBs like a Josh Jones who's actually listed as a safety plays more of a linebacker role in those so that becomes very very important and it's just a different look now I will bring this up because it's been happening a lot lately, and we're going to have to keep bringing it up. If you go back and listen to our post-draft special back in April, you're going to find that a lot of the things that we had to say, Dave and myself, had to say on that, that episode are starting to be more recognized and reported more widely from the big wigs out there in the world as recognizing it now. Now, not to be mean to those guys, I just feel like we want our credit where our credit should be due. They're only now rehashing, even though I know some. You no, know, I'm not saying they got it from us. Okay, I'm not saying they got it from us. But at the same time, we were the first ones at the party, so to speak, and therefore I want our damn credit for it. You know, like uh, we, I told you a long time ago when we dra did the draft, Mike Daniels was not going to be a part of this with the way they wanted to run defense, the one four six amoebic defense with Kenny Clark or whoever playing nose tackle is the only guy with his hand in the dirt and everybody standing up has been being played a lot and reported a lot about recently in training camp. Um, you know, Elton Jenkins being drafted to pretty much unless something bad, he didn't show up like they expected. He was drafted to play and start and replace Lane Taylor. And I know people want to come up with stats and tell me he was one of the best rated pass blocks. Look, you can give me all the stats in the world. And this is where this goes back to the GOAT conversation with me. You can give me all the stats in the world. At the end of the day, I still watch the games. I watch tape. And stats are great, but stats are not all, they're not also used in the context of when they came. You tell me a guy threw for 530 yards, but he lost the game 38-24. What the hell good did that 530 yards in? And when 240 of them came, you know, in the fourth quarter when they were playing soft coverage and just letting the clock run and letting you get five yards and five yards, but then, you, you know, forcing you to kick a field goal so that you can't make a comeback, it doesn't mean that you're a better quarterback because your stats are padded, Okay. Or, or a better running back, or a better receiver, or your offense is that much better. It's it's just not the case. So stats can be very deceiving. They can be used in a deceiving way, and they're not meant to be like that. It's just, and people I don't think go out of their way intentionally all the time, but that's just what happens here with those, is you just get all of those out there. Period. So, that's the way it...